thirds. We should be in the upper third. Welcome to our channel. I'm Lynn. And I'm Jonathan. And we are Create, Create and Capture, Capture Life. Life. Well, you got it that time. <laughs> this is week 22 on our 52 weeks to full-time RV life. And uh, we want to apologize that we've missed uh, missed some time here and there. Uh, Lynn and I have both been stricken with the plague. Uh, we both got Don't the flu. Don't say the plague because the plague actually happens in Los Angeles and we didn't have a plague. No. So we had the plague. We'll have the CDC show up at our house. Yeah, that's true. So no, we both uh, we both got the flu. We've both been really um, <laughs> we've both been really sick uh, the last couple of weeks. Those are our dogs in the background, Flash and Pixel, and a new member of the oh, family. Let me, let me go get him actually, since we left you on a cliffhanger last yep. time of our new family member. Let me go get him so you can. Ah! Him. Yep. Make sure you like and subscribe. <gasps> Who's this? This is Scout. This is our new poppy. Say hi, Scout. Look, look at the people, Scout. He's got lipstick on his nose because he hit my nose earlier. <laughs> so this is Scout. Say hi, Scout. He's our new poppy. He's two and a half months old. And he has one white, he's all white except for right there in the back. And he has little short legs and he's a rescue dog. He's a mix. So, yeah, that's our new family member. That's our new family member. <laughs> so, all right, so this week we are gonna talk about uh, an interesting topic. We're gonna talk about... Choosing to be homeless. Yep. We are about to be homeless, right? Yep. According right. to the federal government, we are choosing to be homeless. So, um, for those of you that are thinking of RVing full-time, or those of you that do RV full-time, you are homeless. According to the federal government, you are not nomads. There is no such thing as a nomad. According to the federal government, you are not nomads. You are not boondockers. You are not campers. You are mobile homeless. That's what it's called. So we've gotten a lot of questions. The two most common responses we get from telling people our idea to go full-time RV life is one, that's amazing. I would love to do that. You know, good luck. God, I want to do that someday. Like there's all those positive responses and the other side of the coin we get, why would you choose to be homeless? And so I've done a bunch of research to see what feeds that notion that we are choosing to be homeless and have found that yes, we are choosing to be homeless and everyone who RVs full time or lives in, does van life, um, lives in a car, a van, anything other than a, on a plat, on a, foundation um, house is considered homeless according to the federal government of the United States. So um, first we're gonna talk about California. So for those of you thinking of coming to California on RV trips or anything like that, um, California does not recognize boondocking. There is no such thing as boondocking in the state of California. Um, if you go on to uh, what, are the, what is it? The BLM. Fe yeah, federal lands or... BLM land or any of the... Oh, parks or any of those things where people say they're boondocking. According to the federal government or according to the government in California, you're not boondocking, you're camping. Even if you're in a vehicle. So that I found was interesting. Um, and in Los Angeles, if you park on a city street in a any kind of vehicle, uh, car, camper... Um, van life RV and it's not registered or it's not running it can be towed even with you in it just FYI so if your RV breaks down in California and you leave it on a street um, and you leave something in it some people in it they may get towed with the vehicle interesting that's if it's not registered right? not registered or not working not in working yeah. order like not running oh okay. like so if it needs to be worked on and it has to be towed or something like they're gonna tow it if it's there for more than a few hours um i mean it doesn't really mean that it's actually gonna get towed 
the, who's the reality is it could the city of Los Angeles is so inundated with everything else that they have to deal with. They tow a lot, a lot mm. in, in LA County, especially um, Orange County, not as much probably, but in yeah. LA County, they tow hundreds and hundreds a day. Oh, wow. So in 2017, um, parking on city streets in any kind of recreational vehicle, which includes van life, um, is, was banned. So parking on any residential streets or in residential areas, like in front of a park or anything like that in the state of California was banned as of 2017. So if you're thinking of boondocking, boondocking, residential boondocking in California, be careful because it's as of 2017, it is illegal to do that in California. Um, you are not allowed to park a recreational vehicle a van that's been suited to live in, a car that you were living in, or a trailer within 500 feet of a school or a park in the state of California. So another thing, another restriction for our RV life, van life, any of that, you cannot park within 500 feet of a school or a park. And for obvious reasons, I mean, they're just looking out for the safety of children and things like that. So that's um, another reason, another thing that's, different in California and all states have their own rules. So wherever you are, just kind of check them. But when I was researching these, I did not know that California was so strict. I understand why California is so strict. We have over 20% of the entire homeless population in the country in California, over 20% of all 50 states, those homeless are in California. So mobile homeless is a huge thing in California. So I can see why they're cracking down, Yeah. but crazy. Yeah. Um, I knew we had a homeless problem in California. I did not realize that we beat everybody in the country by so much in the state of California. It's the weather. Yeah. <laughs> there are officially in the city of Los Angeles or the county of Los Angeles, actually not the city, city of Los Angeles, county of Los Angeles, both exist, two different things. But in the county of Los Angeles, there are only 200 legal RV spaces available in the entire county that you can pay to stay at. There's 200 available in the entire LA County. So think about that, considering how many people live in LA County. And currently in California, we have over 10,000 people who are considered mobile homeless, hmm. which means anybody, and according to the, the federal government, if you're living in anything with wheels that is drivable or towable, you are homeless. So, yeah, and we have over 10,000 mobile homeless in Los Angeles County. It's a in lot. California or LA? In LA, actually oh, in wow. LA. More in, more in California, because if you go up to San Francisco, there's a lot of Cal in San Francisco area because of the um, Silicon Valley. There's a lot of people who work for a living full time and they live in a vehicle because they can't afford the rent. Yeah. So they're all considered homeless. Um, let's see, you can in Orange County, which is where we live in Orange County, you can park on a city street for five hours in an RV or trailer or a van, or if you're living in a car, you're allowed to park on a city street for five hours. It can be extended to 36 hours if you get permission from the local police department. So you have to go ask them for permission, but there are only six permits per year per resident. So let's say if we have a townhouse, so people can't park in front of our house, but let's say we have like my brother's house, if he allowed us to park in front of his house and we got the permit to park for 36 hours in front of his house, he could only allow us to do that six times per year in Orange County, or us or anybody else. So that was an interesting thing. Um, Anaheim, the city of Anaheim where Disneyland is, bans overnight parking completely. So in the city of Anaheim, you are not allowed to overnight park in any kind of vehicle and be sleeping in it in the entire st city of Anaheim, it's illegal. And then bar RV parking on any city street in Anaheim is also illegal. Oh. Yeah. Now that's interesting because I know that I've seen semi-trucks. <clears throat> I wonder if what they fall under the category. I mean, I'm sure they probably fall under this, this same category, but I've seen a lot of semi-trucks on city streets in Anaheim pulled off. And I know that they're in there sleeping because they're in residential areas. Um, and for those of you guys that are not aware, like commercial drivers are only allowed to drive, I believe it is <clears throat> like 12 to 14 hours a day 
um, and then they have to be off for a certain amount of time. So uh, I mean, I'm assuming they're probably just stopping to get some sleep to reset their logs or whatever. And then if the police show up, they probably move. Yeah, or the or they just have an agreement with the cops. Like, look, I'm. I right. can't technically go anywhere. I'm out of my I'm out of my hours. Right. <clears throat> I just need to stay here for a couple hours. So I mean, there's I'm sure that there's there's exemptions to the rules, you know. But um, that's interesting. I didn't realize yeah. you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. And so, if you're thinking of boondocking near Disneyland because you want to visit Disneyland, um, no. Yeah. <laughs> there are three RV parks near Disneyland though that are mm -hmm. all pretty. They're kind of expensive, yeah. but they're all, you know, run and well and clean. So. Yeah. And actually, if you guys want more information on those, uh, go check out our friends, uh, Dan and Jen Nevada. Uh, they did uh, their half-assed reviews of um, the a three. Anaheim <coughs> RV parks. Actually, they did all three of them. They did the Anaheim RV park, Orangeland RV park, and the... Harbor Ball, I believe it is. I don't or, know what the other one's Anyway, uh, they did all three of them. And they actually stayed at one of them. So go go check out Dan and Jen Nevada on YouTube and look for their uh, reviews on the uh, on the Disneyland area um, yeah. RV parks. Yeah, and there was a really good <clears throat> video. So yeah. go check them out. It's at Dan and Jen Nevada yeah. on YouTube. Um, and if I remember, I will link that video yeah. below for you guys. Um, you are no, if you have a trailer, so let's say you have a fifth wheel or a, or a travel trailer or whatever, you are not allowed to leave it unattached on any city street in the state of California. So if you're on a city street of any kind in the state of California, you cannot leave a trailer unattached. I assume that that's probably for safety reasons too. Um, yeah. because you could leave a trailer and have it blow up or something, you know, I mean, let's be real. Yeah. Um, now then again, all cities and all um, counties are gonna supposedly have the same rules based on California laws, but whether or not the police are gonna enforce them or how you know um, vehemently they enforce them, certain cities, yeah. like in our city, you would get caught in 12 seconds because somebody's gonna call the police on you in this city if you yeah. are parked on their street or you're parked in front of their house, or you're parked anywhere that you, they think you shouldn't be parked, someone's gonna call the police in our city. That's the way our city is. And our police will come out and they will take care of it, which is a good thing and a yeah. bad thing. Um, but they're all different. So just, you know, if you're thinking of boondocking or stealth camping or all those other things that, all those other terms, don't do it in California. And in the rest of the country, just be careful. So just be careful um, parking overnight or anything because there's no such thing as boondocking, legal boondocking in California. And then BLM, public land, and state of California land, you would have to check with those different areas, the different counties, the different jurisdictions, whatever it is, and see where you're allowed to stay. So we haven't checked into those yet, but it's interesting. We did not know all these things about our own state. Yeah, there's a lot of obviously BLM land and stuff like that, but that is mostly out in the desert and Northern California <clears throat> and Northern California and stuff like that. So yeah, you can uh, stay BLM land. You can stay like at um, you know state parks and stuff like that. Um, check the restrictions on those. Uh, you know, obviously with all the BLM land, you know there's a there's time frames and stuff like that that you can stay. But, um, you know, every area is going to be different. Right. And, okay, so I'm going to go into a couple of definitions because some questions that have come up is, what's the difference between a mobile home park and a trailer park? What's the difference between an RV park and a campground? What's the difference between a mobile home, a motor home, and an RV? And they're all different things. So we're going to kind of go into that, and then we're going to talk more about being homeless. So the first thing is an RV. Now, these are the legal federal definitions of these things. So an RV is a motor vehicle or trailer, which includes living quarters designed for accommodation. Motorhomes, camper vans, caravans, travel trailers, campers, trailers, pop-up trailers, and truck campers. So those all fall under RV, which is recreational vehicle. But RV, according to the federal government, is not a, an actual term, it's a nickname for vehicles. Interesting. Mobile home. A mobile home is a prefabricated pre structure built in a factory on a permanently attached chassis with strong trailer frames, axles, wheels, and tow hitches. So that's interesting because 
that's a mobile home. But certain motor homes or fifth wheels could be crossed into that because they are attached to a chassis with axles and everything else. And also a tiny home that's towable could fall under mobile home. Um, a motor home is a motorized unit that usually have beds, kitchens, bathrooms, and living quarters, a self-propelled recreational vehicle, which offers living accommodation combined with vehicle engine. So that's self-explanatory. A motor home is like a class A. Class A, class B, class C. Something where that you're not towing. Anything that's, yeah, basically anything that's not a towable. Yeah. So an RV sounds like it could be it's a like, motor home or a mobile home or a fifth wheel or a, yeah you know, so anything. it's like a generic term that's a generic term a mobile home sounds like it's more of a pre-manufactured home like it can be moved yeah but it could because it's on a trailer yeah so but interesting because it says prefabricated structure so i wonder how that does fall into like a fifth wheel or something like that but then obviously a motor home is anything that you drive yeah so it has an engine attached <clears throat> to it that's cool so, okay, so an RV park, according to the federal government, an RV park is a place where people with recreational vehicles can stay overnight in allotted spaces known as sites or campsites. That's what an RV park is. A mobile home park, which if you look at the definitions, a mobile home park and an RV park should be kind of the same thing because they're both towable, they're both on prefabricated, pre all those things, but they're not. So a mobile home park is an area for people to live in mobile homes. That's the only definition of that. But a mobile home is not supposedly not the same as an RV, as an RV or a motor home. Mm. Um, mobile home park versus a trailer park. A mobile home park requires special permits and professionals to move them. So a mobile home, although it's on wheels and can be towed, requires like a semi or someone like that or like someone special to move it for you and then put it where it's going to be a trailer is meant to be moved and can be moved by a truck or an suv so a trailer park would be according to the definition a trailer park could be a fifth wheel park it could be a travel trailer park it could be any one of those things so when you're saying like people live in a trailer park like as a derogatory term, that's actually not a thing because they're not living in trailers, at least not in California. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then trailer parks are meant for short stays, according to the federal government. So. So trailer park is more like an RV park. Yeah, but they're different things. Yeah. So it's very convoluted, right? Yeah. I mean, you get into the language, it's very convoluted. Um, and then mobile home parks are meant for long-term stays. So those are the ones where it's a mobile home, but they put it there and build the structure around the bottom. So you can't see, like, I assume, where those structures where you can't see the wheels underneath, yeah. you know, so it looks like more like a home. And then a tiny home, which is big in California, especially in Northern California, a tiny home is any dwelling that is 400 square feet or less in floor area not excluding lofts not a manufactured home but they are on trailers and sometimes are movable but movable with a truck or an suv sounds just like a fifth wheel to me hmm. but it's, it's a tiny home so and then a manufactured home versus a mobile home mobile homes only refers to manufactured homes built prior to 1976 this is interesting. So prior to 1976, there was such a thing as a mobile home. Anything built after 1976 is legally referred to now as a manufactured home. So mobile homes don't exist anymore. Well, they exist. Unless they They're were old. built before 1976. Yeah. So anything that's not a trailer, not a tiny house, huh. is considered a manufactured home. If it's built after 1976. After 1976. <clears throat> so if you're not if you're confused so was i when yeah. i was doing all of this so then the definition of a campground is a place used for camping especially one equipped with cooking grills and toilets and camping is the act of staying or sleeping in an outside area for one or more nights in a tent not in an rv 
So if you are in an RV, you are not camping. Who knew? Unless you're sleeping outside in a tent and like next unless to your you RV. Put, unless, yeah, I guess unless you yeah. put a tent up next to your RV and sleep in that. You are not camping. You are um, staying in your RV, I guess. You're RVing. Yeah, you're RVing because you're not camping. Yeah. Um, now, here's the legal definition, federal definition of being homeless. An individual who lacks a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence or a person who resides in a shelter, vehicle, or RV. That is the legal definition of someone who is homeless. So we are choosing to be homeless, according to the federal government. Mobile homeless means living in a vehicle, truck, RV, camper, not on vacation. So we and everyone else that we know that RVs full time, we are all mobile, mobile homeless. Mobile homeless by legal definition. And yes, we are choosing to do that. Yep. In California, California hosts more than 20% of all homeless individuals in the U.S. More, more than 9,500 of those people live in cars, vans, and RVs in Los Angeles County alone. That's a lot of people living in vehicles. A lot. And then um, boondocking. The only definition I could find is not from the federal government. It was um, from RV people. Is dry camping, parking anywhere without or with limited amenities. Independent parking is the preferred legal term. So we, as the RVers, people call it boondocking, but according to the federal government, you're independent parking. You're not boondocking, you're independent parking. <laughs> you're independent of, I, I guess, don't know. stuff? You're independent of your water, power, uh, yeah. sewer. You're just okay. independent parking. I don't know. That's okay. the legal definition according to the federal <clears throat> government. And then um, a nomad is people with no fixed residence, but move from place to place, usually seasonally and within well-defined territory. Someone who roams about. But that does not include people who live in cars, trucks, or RVs. So people who live in cars, trucks, or RVs are not nomads. What are they? Homeless. Are homeless. Mobile homeless. So, um, as we watch all of our, the channels that we follow on YouTube and they, everyone says, I'm a nomad, I'm living the nomadic life, I'm boondocking, I'm doing all these things, I've, in all the research that we've done in the last few weeks, we find that none of those terms actually go with what people say they are. Am I saying that right? Like, yeah. It's not, those are not legally really what you're doing. You're really being homeless. And the federal government, this is another interesting thing, does not consider domiciling with a, using a fake address is not the legal definition of domicile. Domicile means that you have, like if we owned this house here in California and then we owned a house somewhere else and we chose to pick one of the addresses, if we lived in both but we chose one of them as our address, that is our domicile address. But those of us like going, cause like we're gonna do this too eventually is if you're choosing to have an address somewhere else, like Texas, a lot of people do through escape, escapees, escapers. Mm -hmm. Which is it? Both. Okay. People who choose to have fake addresses according to the federal government, they are not domiciling there. They are just using a fake address. And um, according to the newest information that I've been able to find is that starting this year in 2020 and beyond, the federal government is going to start cracking down on people using so-called fake addresses, domicile addresses, because of tax evasion. So that's interesting. So everybody who's mobile homeless using a fake address, now these are not my terms, these are the government's terms the way the government looks at it is you are mobile homeless and you are using a fake address to get mail and so you can choose your fake address to be Texas and have to pay Texas taxes but if you do anything in any other states if you bought your RV in another state or if you bought something big in another state if you earned money in another state you have to report to all those states 
So on your taxes where it says, you know, have you purchased anything outside? Like when we do our taxes, it says, have you purchased any large items outside of the state of California? You have to say yes or no. And then if the answer is yes, like let's say we went somewhere and bought a car, I don't know, like in another state, we'd have to claim that on our California taxes that we bought a car in another state and then we'd have to pay California taxes on it. And then if there were taxes in that other state, we'd have to pay those too. So. If this is all making your head spin right now <laughs> and giving you a headache, me too. So it's a lot of convoluted stuff. And the bottom line is for us, yes, we are choosing to be homeless. As we research more into it, we are gonna make sure that we do everything by the book and legal because we will be working in different states. And so we wanna make sure that if we choose to have a domicile in another state that it's legal because we will still be making money in other states and we want to make sure that we're doing everything above yeah. bar um because we don't want to get in trouble later but it's interesting to find out that we're not going to be nomads we're not going to be doing you know we're not living a nomadic lifestyle that we are considered mobile homeless it's interesting yeah. on the other side of that because we will be considered homeless if we wanted to, we could apply for all of the benefits that homeless people get in the state of California. And in the state of California, there's a lot of benefits for homeless people. Yes. You can get like free cell phones. They get like a lot of different things that you can get for being homeless in the state of California and a lot of other states. Because you are mobile homeless, you can apply for those benefits if you're in a state. So like if you stay in Florida for three months, you can apply for homeless benefits in Florida for three months. Does Florida have homeless benefits? I don't know. I don't know if Florida has that, but if they did, and I was staying in Florida for three months in a mobile home, or in a, I guess it would be an RV park, um, technically you could apply for homeless benefits because you're homeless. So not that we would ever do that because that's a whole nother rabbit hole I would never want to go down, but I'm just saying if anybody wanted to do that, you can tap into those homeless benefits in whatever state you're in, especially if you're there for more than a month. And th um, that also affects health insurance. So because you are considered homeless, you can qualify for um, government subsidies of um, health insurance. I haven't looked more into that, but you can. Yeah. Like here in California, it's Medi-Cal. Um, so I don't know, interesting. Yeah. So we didn't edit right there. We ran, our card was full. We talked too much. Yep. Card was full. Um, so we're gonna wrap this up, but what we wanna say is yes, to those of you who have asked, apparently according to the federal government's definition guidelines, we are choosing to be mobile homeless. Yes. We are not taking the decision lightly. We don't have an exit plan. That's the other thing that a lot of people have asked is do we have an exit plan? We do not have an exit plan because to both of us an exit plan is something that you create when you expect something to fail and we don't expect this to fail. Um, you don't create an exit plan when you know, you're gonna buy a house or something like that. You, know, you don't create an exit plan for when you're gonna go start something new. Uh, and this is, this is why we don't think it's necessary for us to have an exit plan. We don't, we don't anticipate quitting. failure. We don't anticipate quitting. We anticipate problems for sure. We think there's, you know, there's definitely the chance that situations are gonna come up that we aren't expecting, but you know, as a family, we'll deal with it. Just like, you know, we deal with it in this house. Yeah. Things break, things happen, things change. You just go with the flow and that's how we are. We don't kind of, we don't freak out over things too no. much. Um, we just kind of, a lot of it we laugh at. A lot of things that would freak a lot of people out, we pretty much laugh at because it's like, of course that would happen, you know, of course. <laughs> The other big question we get asked is, um, aren't you gonna get bored? You know what, I get bored here sometimes. It happens. You just, you know, life is what you make it. You can be, we were just talking about this at dinner tonight. Miserable people like to be miserable. Some people really like that. Some people really like to be unhappy. Some people thrive on that. We are not those people. We are more like, look at the bright side. It's gonna be fine. Oh, well, whatever, duct tape will fix it. You know, that's more our <laughs> our look, outlook on life. So we don't have an exit plan. We are going to be mobile homeless. Don't worry about us. We'll be fine. We'll be and for just all of our fine. all of our friends that are out there are being now, you're homeless. And you seem really happy. 
So that's awesome. We are super excited to come out and be homeless with you. Yep. All over the country. Yep, exactly. So, and any of you guys that do have comments, and I'm sure some of you will have comments or differences of opinions on this subject, please share them below. Comment below. Yeah, like I said at the beginning of the video, we, we want to know what research, what information other people have. Especially people who've been RVing for yeah. a long time. What have you found? Yep. And I think that's it that's for it. this week. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Make sure you give us a thumbs up if you're so inclined. Hit that bell notification so you know when we post new videos. And follow us on Instagram at Create and Capture Life. We'd love to see you there. And thanks for being here. Talk to you soon. Bye.